What's up? Good, man. Good, man. I'm tired. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to promote it without making money off it. Now I'm good. I'm sorry. <laughs> sir. Sure. Just want to get your your thought process on those questions. So, when did you start leading in church? Leading worship in church specifically. So the um, that's a good question. Like, I don't know if you were leading in church before you started worship leading in church. Was that the case? Well, so back in the day, Psalm thirty nine started when I was probably started singing when I was seventeen, eighteen. But at that time, the term worship leader, worship pastor, wasn't even a thing at the time. So the setup was basically I was I was a keyboardist slash organist. Last choir leader, I guess. So that was kind of my role at that point in time. Um, choir director, whatever it would have been called back in the day. And so I was basically the worship leader of hymns, I guess, at that time, mm -hmm. and the youth choir. Um, so that would have been high school, jumping right into the college uh, season. But my main heart, once I, so worship leader is kind of, came like organically because I went to LBC. Um, I didn't want to go there in the first place. That's another story. LBC meaning like Bible College. Like a Bible College, yeah. Um, and I went undecided for a year and a half. That sophomore mid year, um, I had to choose between pastoral ministry and then worship leader or worship whatever it was called at that or music ministry. I forget the title of the major, but. Um, so, so I told, chose pastoral ministry, the <clears throat> Lord opened my eyes to see I had a heart for leading people, shepherding, um, loving people, helping them to break down the scriptures, you know, apply it to their lives, draw closer to Jesus. So I could play, I could sing a little bit, but I wasn't really focused on being a worship leader per se. Um, but coming out of college, I had a classmate who came from Texas. I had half, probably twice my age at that time. And he was like, hey, I'm starting this church from the ground up. It wasn't necessarily a church plant from another church. He was just literally starting the church in like some city. He was like, hey, you want to be my minister of music? So that was my, actually my first title, mm -hmm. um, mainly African-American church. Uh, so I was a part-time minister of music while all of my LBC friends that were serving in the church at that time, close friends, mission, were worship leaders or worship pastors. So was this the place where I met you? Where I came to help yeah, you out? Yeah, like us. Millersville? When you did yeah. our system. Yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah. know how connected you were with those guys over there, but mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. So like, I kind of knew that, but I didn't want to just drop it all and say like, and just like, what's, what's the point of having an interview if I don't, if I do right. all the talking? Right, right. Um, so, I mean, time-wise, that would have been 2007, 2008, probably. And then I would have been, I don't know, I can't, 20, 24? Yeah, I think we met in 10, because I had just moved to Lancaster not too mm. long before I had interacted, because right. I just got married. And you were at, wow, that's dope. So you just got married. Yeah, we got married in 2010. Which is crazy, because, like, worship center's building opened open in 2010. Wow. Like the we got back from our honeymoon the same day that the building grand open. Wow. Dang, I didn't realize that. So, good. Um so yeah, when you came, I probably would have been there two two at least two years probably. Because we were merging and then that's when we needed the mm -hmm. new system or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um so yeah, I was two thousand eight, I'd say probably if I had to estimate. From there, I was at that church. It was in the city on Millersville side. Um, for about seven, seven, six or seven years. Left there. Um, didn't want to be a part of a church at all for about a year. I just had. Yeah, I remember you popping up on TLR. 
Yeah, it's the alarm. Man, I, was, I went kicking and screaming. My wife, <laughs> my wife was at, yeah, we, we were just kind of hurt from that previous church experience. Um, I was like, I'm not serving again. Definitely not being on staff again. I don't even want to go to church around church people again. Love Jesus, but kind of figure that whole thing out. A big, big part of that was I had godly mentors who showed me the heart, what a heart of worship meant outside of serving in a church, like ministry, church ministry. So by God's grace, man, actually that was a great time, even though it was, even though it hurt like a bug and it was, it was bad for a long time. But, but yeah, so TLR, the living room at Worship Center, that was, I don't even know, that would have been, shoot, 15, 16 maybe? Probably. Because uh, yeah, yeah, I started yeah, there in 2014 yeah. in May. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I feel like I remember you showing up when we were in the main auditorium yeah. and not in the small. Yeah, so it would definitely been OT and C time because I remember they had fruit all around that. 15? Yeah, so. Yep. Um, that was the first, that was like one yeah. of the first big things that August that I had to do. That was well, challenging. They had, and that was, that's what actually got me. It's crazy, man. The fruit. The fruit, bro. Yeah, the fruit and rice. <laughs> they had honey crisp apples. That was my favorite apple. And they had it like lined up. I remember. I was like, this church does fruit every week. They had raw honey, which had me. I was like, I, was like I, ain't. I think somebody else mixed that night for me. And I was like, I'm going out there to eat. I was sitting out there eating all of the scraps. <laughs> it was hilarious. Dipping bread and oil. I ain't never had that. That's hilarious. I was like, I'm getting That's educated. Hilarious. I had real fig. I never had <laughs> You know, I, I'm like, I've had, like, what you call them, Josh? The kiwi? I had those yeah. before in my life, yeah. but real fig was there. I was like, what is this? And I was like, oh, that's a fig. And I'm halfway into eating it. Like, oh, I love me some fig newtons. Yeah, I know. I, that's, that's funny. funny. Fig that's funny. <laughs> We never know. I never yeah, know. Right. Like, I, what know. Is this? <laughs> I didn't even know. What I mean. it. <laughs> that's funny. Um, but the truth is there. But yeah, so that. Shoot, where, where did I go with that? So, so yeah, TLR, I went because my wife had gone the previous week. Then I came, and I was like, all right, next week I'm coming back to get some more fruit and to hear this guy preach. Um, I didn't trust him, but the young adult pastor, but I just knew. Like, he, he talk, talked about Jesus, so I was mm -hmm. like, all right, come back. Kept talking about Jesus, coming back, kept talking about Jesus. Um. That's funny because I didn't tell anybody I was a, well, you knew, but I didn't tell anybody that I was a preacher, teacher, musician, singer. I, I didn't. I don't know if you teach it for you, just so you know. That's dope. I, I don't didn't, know how it came out, man. Like, I don't know either because it well, sure wasn't me. Because I, I kind of got that vibe from you. I think we slightly talked about it. Yeah, you told me not to serve, which was a good word. Yeah, like if you would leave in a church, because like, I was in a, in a similar like heartbreak leaving the urban church. You know, where it's just like, man, so many opinions of who we should be, what we should be doing, and everything else like that, and how we should be dressing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, the Bible says, come as you are. And I'm like, why do I have to come differently? You know, why do I have to? Oh, because I've been here for six months. Now I got to put on a suit. And I'm like, I don't want to buy a suit. I like wearing sweatpants and Jordans. Yeah, yeah, ministers, that's what I was told. Ministers should wear suits to represent. I wasn't even a minister, though. I was a drummer. <laughs> Bro, that's funny. So many stories. Mm -hmm. I had minis the ministers at our old church had to wear um, uh, like the, the the full garb and all of that. Yeah, Dude. on a, like so, a robe on first Sundays. Me and you could talk about this because you know the urban church. So Larry Trotter, we were part of Larry Trotter's yeah. organization, and I remember one time going, and I was like, in like, all right, if I'm if I got to dress up a little bit, I'm gonna be balling. We had just come back from London. And I had bought a Thomas Pink shirt, and it was like four hundred dollars for the shirt. And I had Gator shoes on and some cool pants and everything. And I get in there, like you need to, now that you you you're at, in the part, you need to dress the part. And I was like, what does that mean? I'm like, I'm wearing Thomas Pink. You can't see the label because there ain't no brand on it. But what does that mean? And they're like, oh, you need to put a collar on. Never ever gonna happen. And and these jokers put me in like a coat closet. I was, I'm like, is that disrespectful to y'all or something? And so I remember vividly texting my pastor, like, we need to go. I drove. Um, I drove here. That's 
So if we go home and you go home, we need to leave soon. Say get get your hugs and say you have, you do your you do, but I ain't sitting in this coat closet too long. That's crazy. And I ended ended up going out to the car and sitting in the car the rest of the night. And I'm sitting there like then we it all went down and then next time we were around Larry Trotter, there was no issue. Like I'm like, why? He ain't like that. Y'all got these rules. So the person whose office it was at the church, but when we went to Chicago, was no issue. Anyways, that's all a, a whole crazy yes. Ramble, yes. Yeah. but we all dealt with it. And so I was like, I'd never, I was like, yo, I'm going to deal, because I had better ex interactions with secular artists than I did with Christian, with urban gospel artists. Um, and so I was like, yeah, whatever. And if it wouldn't have been for Matt, I'd have never really been part of doing stuff in church. I was serving and it was, that was interesting for me too. Yeah. Um, but then Matt, just his friendship and relationship. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to dive deep into this again with you because you, you're a cool dude. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do life with you, you yeah. know? And it was really like my relationship with him. Yeah, um, yeah, like, honestly, yeah. once he moved on to being a senior pastor, that was probably the most challenging part of the role was not having that extreme interaction with him. And yeah. then I remembered kind of like how my pastor felt like what only people that would do things were people that could be super close to him, you know, in the urban church, like if pastor ain't coming, I ain't coming. Yeah. Oh, pastors, like some pastors out of town this weekend, yeah. like pastors having a high that somebody as a guest preacher coming, or it's gotta be a superstar, yeah. you know? Facts. Facts. <laughs> that was the same. So when I went to TLR, um, that was the same with Bryce where like the problem was the hurt came from, the lead pastor at the previous church, so coming to worship center slash TLR, um, I just come in not trusting, you know, in that position, Bryce That's Taylor. True. But he forced the love of Jesus on me, man. It was crazy. He do that. He do that well too. Him and, him and his wife, and uh, so I'm still wondering if the difference is because he ain't from here. Like he's from a different country, and like you ever go on a missions trip, you see the people are different. In different places it's yeah yeah it's interesting i mean i, mean, I could talk a lot about that like we were talking about with there mm -hmm. yeah uh and me coming from baltimore um yeah so i i mean all i ended up being on the worship team there after a year so from there i was volunteer leading aaron and i led the uh in-house team. In team for TLR. That's funny. Yeah, I don't it might not even I don't know what it's called now. But um did that for like two years, two and a half, then we had a baby, so then yeah. got off of that, figuring out what parenting meant. Still still still, still, am, still, am, still am. Still am. Still am started. I was meant to say started to Besides. discover what that meant. Um, I ain't yeah. had to figure it out, that's for sure. That's funny. So I think from there I transitioned straight to here. I was trying to think if I stopped leading. Well, I started I stopped leading. Then about a year after when Julian was one, I think that's when I jumped back into leading on Sundays mm -hmm. at the worship center. Then, I don't know, what, a year what, or two what, after. Here? here? Yeah. Oh, man, I'm horrible with years. So, it's to 2023, I started in uh, January 2022 here. Okay. Yeah. So, I would have left Worship Center in probably November, December. Yeah. yeah, so I wasn't able to keep track of all of that that progression yeah. and help you out because I was basically a contractor to mm -hmm. the end of, mm -hmm. to December 12th or something like that of 2021, I believe. I remember that, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so here I am. Yeah, so dope. So you've laid out all of that experience of things that you've done. What similarities have you found leading in the various roles you, that you've held? Similarities, differences, like okay, so different similar similarities in how I function in the role or as a leader, leader. Like okay, so let me see, see if I can rephrase, rephrase it. How so? Similarities meaning like how has leading 
evolved for you and what things are still the same? Oh, uh, dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good question, so I don't help you think back, think back. Um, I still have a passion for creating music. I wouldn't call myself like a writer or so more on the the moment you music, know call me music that's funny I've, I've only written like two and a half songs I still gotta I finish like the one song <laughs> um Manny actually helped me out with the chord progress um yeah he, he seems yeah. to hold me um so with the create the even like I'm I'm playing usually here there's a main I have a music director here he's phenomenal um, and he plays keys, so he's always, I, I just sing. Which is, is that show, or is he not here? No, nah, he, so okay. he had a position, I think, in War at, Warwick. Yes, at the school, yeah. yeah. He should do things for him. So, Matt Hartsock. Hart okay. uh, I hope that he gets a chance to meet him. Milo, man. Um, he's been serving for like 30 plus years, still has a, still has a passion for uh, leading in this function. So, but yeah, so this week I'm playing because he's on vacation, and like, same the same juices man still flowing like the excitement for figuring out the melody lines mm. figuring out the chorus figuring out what chords i can switch up to make it make it mm -hmm. which is a beast which is a lot and leading so yeah because you flow between. different man you fl you flow different when you sing yeah like you're able to like really enter in in a different capacity like yeah. if you're if you're playing and singing at the same time that kneeling down and, and giving God reverence piece is a little challenging. You're yeah, like, oh, yeah. can I do this? And yeah. how will it affect things? Facts. So yeah, it, yeah. it's almost like a, a, a chain. It, it, yes and no. So yes, for sure. Because I, I would say I think I have to think a lot more than I would if I was just singing. But I had, I don't want to, control is a bad word. Like not in a sense that I want to control it. But I have more control <clears throat> with the flow at the end of the song, starting the song, or stopping the song, where I don't, where I'm not throwing the main leader off, like the sure. band leader off. So that's kind of a plus, but also the negative of mm -hmm. what you said. So, but yeah. So that's been similar. I mean, I was thinking about way back to when, like, I was playing an organ, had an organ, like. Before I was ten at my dad's church, he couldn't touch the floor. I still remember, man, to the, to like way back when, just the joy of playing, and so that's that's been very like very similar. And it's evolved at the same time because back then it was just straight hymns. Then it transitioned to like the Kirk Franklin era when he started like uh, um, yeah, when he went. The, I don't even know what to call it, but like. Uh, uh, He's yeah, able, like he's that, a, yeah, 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 going into gospel music, so I adapted to that plan, style of playing. Then coming up here from Baltimore to Lancaster, totally being thrown off with um, CCM style, mm -hmm. now the, the modern worship style. So I had to adjust a lot, but now I, it's actually beautiful now because I can blend the two styles, even with the hymn, hymnal style. Like, and here we do a lot of hymns, which I love. And we do, we pretty much do any style with whatever fits the message or the theme, um, which is dope. So, uh, but yeah, so that's more of the evolving part, just kind of growing and how I play. But um, another similarity, the same <coughs> lies are there, but um, there's maturity, spiritual maturity throughout if that makes sense where I can I'm more aware of the lies now that I have being on the pulpit back in the day or being on the stage now um, so that's a big similarity it's interesting just thinking about after I said that statement like that that's that's been there for years um, Satan's always things are always Attacking Woo! constantly, man. Buddy, I shared with you when we when I first showed up. I'm like, mm -hmm. man, the things that can or Satan knows how to get to you, and I ain't, you ain't getting me this time, buddy. Yeah, man. Yeah, 
So yeah, and that's that's interesting. But um yeah, I think those are the main uh, I think the heart forget for people hearing truth. Like Yeah, that's the main thing that's always kept me on the stage. Like I would love to be just like this. If the, if I if I didn't have to be a worship pastor, and I could just meet one on one with people or just have a group, you know, chilling in Bible study, just digging into scriptures, uh, drawing more closer to Jesus that way, I would do it in a heartbeat. But but I still have this joy of every time I'm on the stage, like somebody gets to hear truth. Prayerfully, all everything that we do is hopefully the songs are truth, you know, filled with truth. But um, to hear a truth and a melody that can touch the emotion and not stay there, but like have Jesus actually speak to you mm -hmm. through that and meet you and where you are and not leave you there. And so, like the the honor that I have to do that. Still humbling, still something I would never run from. From you know, it's as hard as it is to be a, like with the lie part, with the lies that you have to battle. Um, where Jesus fights, and I can't find him alone. Right, but I gotta empty um, myself a little yeah, bit more because the lies are taking up the space that I can't figure out how to get past. So I gotta yeah. empty myself with something else that I've been holding on to that. Maybe I should be keeping just so you can have space to fight that battle for me. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So those are some of the main things. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Sometimes I'll be up there, man, and just look at people. And being being in the pastoral role here, I get to I know people's stories, a lot of people's stories. And to be able to have that time corporately to minister through singing and yeah pray that god is speaking i don't need to that opportunity to know know that their congregations have right. stories which is a big difference from when i was just volunteer leading as just the worship leader mm -hmm. you know yeah you had a core group of people that were helping you to, to push the mission forward mm -hmm. that you knew but the rest of the people that were there it was yeah. probably different for you Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We were so busy over there that I'm like, I knew my people that was with me, but not many other people in the congregation because yeah. the rest yeah. of my time was devoted to my family. Yeah, yeah facts. facts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And a full-time job because that was awesome. Yeah, which is which is huge, man. Um, I think God honors those type of people. Like when it's like you do something else and you still make the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But the, I mean, the fact of the matter is it, even if it's not serving the church, we're all going to make sacrifices of something somewhere, right. you know, and how you how you do that and, and do that with balance, mm. I think is, is, is really important for for people, because mm. if you sacrifice your family, we know where those things lead to, yeah. you know, yeah. if you sacrifice your job, you could end up losing both things. Yeah. So it's a balance yeah. and that's it's hard to deal with. A, I know that's hard for me to deal with a lot of times. Um, right now I've sacrificed career for my nine-year-old, you know, like I want my nine-year-old to be a genius and I see similarities of him in me as an adult. Like you're like the adult version of me at nine. It's a, it's, it's, it's challenging. I'm like, look, I gotta work. I gotta be here to work with you on those things. Cause Colette knows me really well, but I know me well enough to know what's going to help. Like, how do I steer that? first part of your personality without being super controlling. Um, and then it's also healthy for me because I didn't have a lot of parental figures in my life to see how Colette parents. Cause yeah. like I tend to copy her a lot. Like, like I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing that you do, but you can't completely copy somebody unless you're an actual clone. And so like, I'm gonna try to do it your way. And then like, oh, but I know where you stopped off at and the, the circumstance is going further than the, where I've seen you handle it to. And now my I'm in the same situation trying to handle it the same way with you yeah. as you did, but it's, yeah. it's not ending there. And so now how, yeah. where, how do I go forward? Because I only know where you stopped at. Yeah. And now i got to figure it out the rest of the way. And I think those that's where, 
you know, like, oh, he's cranky. And I'm like, okay, well, it's, he's like me then. It's one of two things. He's probably hungry or tired, you know? Sure. So let me, let me, let me figure out which one of them it is. And food is easy to deal with. Tired is a little bit different. Um, food, you feed them. And 30 minutes later, it's like a pill. It's, it's, we back to happiness. Tired. I just said, I got to put on the patient's hat. You know that's what I mean? That's good. That's wise, man. I don't get it right all, hardly ever. But when I do get it right, I'm like, True. it's like like getting a prize in Mario Brothers. Cha-ching! Yeah, man. Then oh, boy. Then you mess up and there's grace. Yeah. You know, that, man. you got to continue with kids, especially you got to continue to just aim, like overemphasize how much you love them. Even after you've made mistakes and faults, and you apologize, and the, yeah. the humility aspect of that, I'm gonna be genuine because um, I'm kind of weird. Like even in my marriage, like if I if I don't think I'm wrong, sometimes I don't apologize. But now I'm like, all right, that's the same thing that I gotta sacrifice. It's like I'm, I'm gonna say sorry even if you are wrong. There's some funny memes about that we can talk about on a personal level. You're seeing some things out there, <laughs> but we talk about that on a personal level so that we don't over cluster this with silliness. Sweet. So, we you talked about the similarities and everything else like that so far. What strengths serve your leadership style most effectively? Like, what do you think your strengths are that you know God gave you to serve your leadership style? Um, I would say the God is like I would consider myself to be man selfish. Like I said, I say this all the time. And when I was talking about in college... Hold on, stop. Is that a lie? Not from you, but is that one of those things that's a lie? No, 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 no. no. no it's a, it's if it's a battle, no, but your personality doesn't come out, and, and with most people, because I've interacted with you for way too many yeah. years to, 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 to see you as selfish, I see myself as selfish and self-centered, but other people tell me I'm generous. So who do other people tell you are that contradicts that 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 personal inward battle that feels like a truth to you, but it's a lie from the pit of hell. I would say I know that God has put in me a heart for people that counters that natural selfishness like that just, and you could say everybody does, you know, just simply through birth, but like, like I know I want what I want. I know I can easily not care about people. I know I can easily want to be right 100% of the time with my wife, <laughs> aka, you know, whatever, fill in the blank. But I went undecided in college because I couldn't care less about ministry. God couldn't care less about serving Him. Could have cared. I cared a whole lot about money, making money in basketball, but and girls at that time. So. That sophomore year, mid mid year, when I chose pastoral ministry, it was literally God had like given me the desires of like loving people, like, and it could have been I don't know. It was just this moment where I was like, oh shoot, I wanna I wanna lead I wanna lead people to Jesus. Like, and I care, I want to care, and all of a sudden, just care deeply about people. And I might have beforehand on the outside, but it might have, it, I'm sure, like, it, it was selfish gain or insecurity coming out. It's like, I need you to love me, so I'm going to love you. But so from that point on, man, I just, like, I say all this, say, like, I sometimes I hate the fact, like, God, man, like, let me just be mad at this person because I, I don't want to have grace, and then there's this ounce of <laughs> grace, or my wife will be like, why the heck are you still talking to these people after you're doing what you did to? I just can't stop loving people. And that's, that's just... That's, like you so much. I, you know, the can't stop loving people, but the grace thing and the, the, like, man, you've done me wrong, yet there's still something in my heart. And I don't know if that comes because Jesus has, like, done so much for us, and there's, like, like, how, who am I to not be as open-handed as Jesus was? Right. You know, like, right. you know, he like, he, dude, let him put people, let him put him on the cross. Right, right, right. You know, and then I hit that, like, when I hit my bed with him, like, no, I ain't going to the cross. Right, right, right. I ain't even going right. to carry one. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm running. 
Yeah. Right. But I can't. But I, can't. I ain't gonna be nowhere near the crowd that day. Yeah, that's funny. I can't. <laughs> I can't, man. Like so, I would say grace and this care. I have this deep care, like, and this is all Jesus. That's why I preface that. Like, it's it's all Jesus. And I I think to add on to your point. We, Aaron and I have developed, my wife and I, grace for people because of the the immense hardship that we've been hurt and pain from other people that we've faced, mm-hmm. specifically from other believers, unfortunately. Um, and that kind of developed this like, okay, this is how, okay, I want to be David to people, not King Saul to people. Like, I want to, this is how I want to lead, not. You know, so I think there's a lot to that. Like he preached that recently, or something like that. The day with the people and not King Saul. Oh, bro, it's this dope book that I read. I was just telling uh, a homie about it. Um, Tale of Three Kings. Okay. Phenomenal book for anybody that's been hurt. Like, yeah, it just goes through David, King Saul, and Absalom, and how, like, yeah, this whole thing with that. But, um, so that that's my strength, along with. I just um keep I like to keep it real. I, so and I want people to know these songs. And these songs that I'm saying, like whenever I'm on stage singing, it's the words they're literally speaking to me as I'm singing the songs. Yeah, and, you're definitely very genuine in your worship. Um and I I think I can get the difference between people. Mm-hmm. Like there's one thing people are like, that's so good. I'm like, nah, that's the anointing and, and like and and I use that word very like closed, like I don't give that out often. Yeah. Um, and I ain't gonna lie, selfishly, I'm like, I wanna work here because mm-hmm. you can sing and you do it from a different heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, I, that maybe because I never aspired aspire to be this. It's just it's just an avenue worship leading or being a worship path to me it's just a window to get to people. And whether it's working a job as you know, in the garbage truck. Like it's, it's a it's a way that Jesus helps me to to meet people, to be with people, for people to see Jesus. And so when I'm on that stage, like I think the realness, the the like I'm I'm what do they say in the book of Acts? I'm cut to the heart with these songs that I'm singing, with these lyrics, and. I want you to know what this song is saying. So sometimes I I want to stop the song, be like, like, dude, like let's let's just read through these and then we'll we'll sing it, we'll sing it, or just stop and pray. Like, man, did you hear like, that new Ben Hastings album? It was fairly no, new, new, but it's like he actually goes through. I think on the back half of the album, like the deluxe version, okay. it talks about what the heart of the songs were, oh, no. and so it's that kind of thing. I remember when Tim Timmons came to the worship center. Um, he would to be able to get people connected to the songs quickly because most people don't know your song if you just wrote it. And he's like, here's what the heart is, and this is what it is, and like I'm struggling with this, and you know this is what God is doing in my life, even though I'm in the middle of a battle of cancer type of thing, you know. And he like in the middle of the night, your mercy finds me. Like I was like, yo, I'm connected. I ain't never heard none of your songs. I ain't even listened to them. Yeah, so I'd, I'd say those are my biggest strengths when I'm leading in this capacity. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely wouldn't say I'm a polished worship leader or a struggle. Most of the time, I am forgetting a lyric and I'm tripping over a word or pitching it off. But you think I'm we would like, get called up if we were meant to? If we were perfect. <laughs> right. Like, hey, here, here, here comes a cloud. Right. <laughs> you guys but, up to Jesus. But if, if, it's, if it's a moment where I can, you know, worship through music, man, I'm forward, man. So, yeah. Man, that's so dope. So, um, you mentioned a book, and I see a bunch of books behind me. Um, how are you actively actively developing yourself in your skill and leadership, both skill 
and leadership you can tap whichever one you want and if you need me to remind you in the back end i got you appreciate it appreciate it um so leadership wise um i think a big part so okay so i not that there's only two parts but like obviously i want i'm i want to learn my strengths weaknesses as an actual leader right uh, one of the things we're going through is um, stress finder. We're just about to we're about to tap into it. Um, but I've always shied away from leadership books, and just recently I'm like, I don't know why I shied away from it because I don't think I'm a good leader, so I don't want to read a book about leadership to tell me where I'm lacking. Right. So I'll just read a book on how to care for people. Because I already know how to do it. <laughs> you know, let me affirm what. Um, so, yeah, but being in this role has really taught me. Like, I have a fellow pastor, a uh, buddy down the hall, always challenges me. Yeah. Uh, guy. That's that. Okay, okay, let me stop there. That's one of the main things in this season. I'm asking a whole lot of questions to um, pastor, our lead pastor bear, um, fellow pastor Rick. Been in the ministry longer, been in a full time ministry longer, and wealth of knowledge, and that that has been some of the best. Like I'm always taking notes, or they'll throw at me books, you know. So I, I started reading a few books on leadership, and I want to start one book it's called Canoeing Up the Mountain or Canoeing the Mountain, something like that. Um, there's this other book I'm reading on worship by A. W. Tozer that's just mad like this talks about the the funk like the heart of it um so i realize i read i read a lot on heart of leading and now i'm starting to dive into like okay the, the skills of leading one of my greatest favorite books i just started i just tapped into it i would say about a month ago uh how to win, win friends and influence people yeah that that and I reread and I was like, oh man, I'm not so much forgetting these things. Like actually listen to the person, ask questions. You know, what are those things called where you, like they kind of help you cheat on like tests and stuff like cliff notes and stuff. Uh, cliff notes. Cliff notes. I, yeah. I don't do cliff notes, but I do audiobooks because yeah, yeah. I want to get way more information into my head. And then I t I'll keep the regular book there, and then I'll highlight that, and then I'll take those pieces out, retype them, and everything. But I can't I for I read for entertainment and entertainment only. But I listen to audio books, which I guess technically counts as reading. But I have to always preface like I read a lot of books, but I don't. Right, 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 right. Like it's like instead of listening to music or something like that in the car, I'll have a, a audio book or a podcast on, trying to consume information. And just stay motivated, inspired, and encouraged with things and ideas and stuff like that. But that, how to the game, game friends influence. I forget how the title goes, but that's a that's one of my jams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we've been going through um, the other facet of that. Um, this book, like I, I don't know. I'm just a simple, firm believer, and like I want to, I want to continue to know more of how Jesus led while he was you know, walking with the disciples and this book, Gospel Fluency, man, I like I talk about it with every it's it's mind blowing, man. Our church is slowly walking through it. Phenomenal, man. It just to me it brings the gospel in a real way that I haven't read before from another author. Um so yeah, so yeah, man. So I'm mad excited about the strength finders and kind of nervous because it's gonna probably hurt in some ways, but definitely, you know, bring growth in. I got you back on the strength finders one, man. I'm deep into that joint. Okay. Sure. That's what's up. Yeah, I won't take up your time on this video, but as soon as we done, I'm gonna ask you what you right, right. find. Or I don't know yet. Yeah, I, I've yet to take the test. So uh, when you get around to taking the test, okay. I need to know what your five are because I've been told my number one is empathy. Yeah, my um, number one is futuristic. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Like, okay. Oh, but what it means and how you how you yeah. relate to people and you start tying it in with all the other tests that are out there. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's good stuff. I don't take yeah. one thing for for matter of fact, and then I don't also don't believe that I can't change. Mm -hmm. Um, like if I don't like something it tells me about myself, mm -hmm. 
I'm like, I'm going to work on that area rather than just focusing on the, the, the other strength. And like, yeah. you know what? I know I, I rub people wrong like this, yeah. but I also, they love me because of this. Yeah. Let me just keep making them love me. Yeah. No, nope, yeah. I'm going to try to work on that area because yeah. there's probably a thousand more other areas beneath the surface that once I work on that one, it's going to rise to the surface. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that over the past like 10 years now. And I'm like, oh man, I thought I was like perfect. And then here comes another new thing that I didn't realize was lying dormant from yeah. previous trauma or whatever, yeah. bad habits, yeah. old defaults coming to the surface. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. Or new stuff that was going in, just going on nowhere right now. Mm. Um, Skill wise, I think I just started actually something that you told me really uh, about the. Um, Preparation, practice, or practice, preparation, rehearsal. Mm -hmm. um, three different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that reminded me, because what I do here is there's so much to do. And I found that in this past year and a half, I haven't been, like, it's no excuse I can make time. Mm -hmm. But I've put, actually developing the skill of singing and playing in the back burner because of all that I do with leading. Right. Whereas at Worship Center, I could spend a month in between just growing in my like breathing exercises, mm -hmm. pitch, like trying to expand the range. Um, so I just tapped in like pretty much right after that um, when we were at the uh, wedding in mm -hmm. um, Downloaded a, a new, like from a trusted source for uh, the workshop or whatever for the voice thinking about doing voice lessons i just have to see there's some other things financially that i need to decide between or land that option but i got that and so i've been working through that started practicing every day um for at least 10 minutes on keys um because i haven't i don't play as much i probably play once every other month and i was like well, shoot why am i not why am i just only playing the week practicing the week before so I started doing that, just working on scales, um, chord timbers, and all that stuff that's, that used to be just in there. Yeah, because when you practice, it opens up that ability for you to be able to flow in the time of preparation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's like, yeah. if I know all of my scales, because scales ain't like, well, a lot of people nowadays, I feel like they, they go learn the song on YouTube, and they learn it there, and it's in the, they find, they'll, they'll go to the depth of Google, like, I need this song right. in the key that I'm supposed to sing and play it in, right. and then, that's as far as I go, right. um, but then, like, the, the neat thing about, like, old, like, practicing is, like, it also prepares you for, like, oh, I messed up a note, and I know how to do this this crazy thing, especially like if you're just a solo artist, it's great for solo artists. Like you're playing on the piano and you you hit a note and you can shift and shift the key at the same time because you know your 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 like the chord like hey I'm on this chord and it was the the center note of the third inversion and I can flip up and like change it. People are like oh and then maybe it's like he did that on purpose. Nope, I messed yeah. up and tricked y'all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's that's real, man. Yeah, I um. I forget this one Andy Minio line that I always stuck with me. Um, if you always prepare, you not or something. If you always prep, you'll never have to prepare for the moment. I forget how he said it. Like, if you're always in the moment, mm -hmm. you never actually have to stop. And like, oh, I have to get ready for this. You're already ready. So Adam talks about that too. I don't know what I hear. We don't know how to how to really. Take the context of be all be, like be always ready type of scripture, mm -hmm. like oh be already always ready for what everything, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Yeah. So, but it it really is everything, yeah. and what everything looks like for us as individuals. But sometimes it gets taken out of context where people are like, "You play keyboards? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not ready for that. I don't know how to play it in that key." You, the Bible says, "Be ye always ready." Yeah. No, stop it. So that's not you know, the out of context. Yeah, I remember when I got caught in a transpose mode, man. Man, especially as in the black church, man, I got it was Trev Williams that I don't even he might he, he might remember that story. You know Trev? Mm -hmm. Drummer. Yeah. yeah. From that point on I learned every key. I made it my goal within a year to learn every key. 
Man, now, I can, now I can, but I remember that date, man. I got caught. I messed up. I so I got, I transposed the, it was a concert, like mad artists, transposed the keyboard, did my song, kept it in transpose mode, messed up the next band. It was bad. So they got, I got the shot. They get, they look terrible. Came back to the green room. Hey, <laughs> who left the transpose button on? Yeah. I think even in that though, if I'm gonna give you some grace, it's like they should look. So many that people don't transpose, especially in the urban church. Mm. We transpose. Like I know how to play in C, mm. <laughs> and everything else gets. Tra- I know how to play a C sharp. Except on the organ, man. Yeah, you can't do that on the organ. But now, so I see the organ with a transpose switch. So that's what it does. But the real B threes, you ain't getting no transpose on that joke, dude. <laughs> But anyway, so, keys. so to, man, come on over, bro. Because <laughs> I got to practice yeah, and prepare yeah, and then rehearse. Yeah. It's a commitment. Yeah. I have a friend about it, though. Um, I <laughs> just told them at Worship Center on Sunday, um, I actually went in for rehearsal at 6 o'clock oh, like, yeah. with Colette. Yeah. And was like, I just wanted to see what my body felt like at 6 o'clock in the morning. Because I normally mm-hmm. don't get up until 6.20 for most of the churches that I got to be at. Like, yeah. 7.30 is the like call time and stuff like that. Yeah. And they do the rehearsal during the, the middle of the week. So then I got them early call times, like 6 o'clock. Yeah. And I was just like, man, you know, like, can my spirit handle and knowing myself well enough, can I handle serving back on audio again? Um, I'm not going to speak for Jesus. I'm going to speak for myself right now. And my spirit says no. Um, but I'm like, man, I'm, I'm really like, I've got cameras and stuff here right now. I'm really into content. Um, so I'm like, I think I could still serve and serve on video and then I show up till seven 30. Um, so I can go sleep in the green room, sure. show up with Colette, still ride the church together. And that's the biggest thing that I'm trying to get back to is actually being in community during the moments and the messages with my family. Um, even if it's only once a month, cause right now it's like, we go hard during the summer, we're on vacation, and we'll like, oh, we went to Elevation this week, we went to the Passion that week, we went to this to that, while we're traveling down south or whatever may be the case, and then we do, like, this church conference coming up. It's, like, a really out in the middle of the woods, like, church camp type of thing. It's, like, a where they have, like, a a camp grove and yeah. a little church set up. Um, yeah. And I'll go up there and hear the message every day of the week, sometimes twice a day, yeah. two, two times on Sunday type of thing. Um and get it like the the opportunity there, and I just I really feel like on a a sacrifice I'm having to sacrifice myself and being like man, but I love serving the church and I love getting out and doing what I'm I'm what I'm good at doing, but if if it means a lot to my wife, you know, money ain't happy wife happy life for Colette. It's it's like I see a difference in our relationship when I'm sitting next to her in church. Um, and so I'm like, I've just been pressed and I, I kind of just like had to find the courage of like, you know what? I don't do Sundays that much no more. Like I'll do one Sunday a month to serve, to help somebody. And like, it's kind of put the things into a box where it's like, oh, I can only do your rehearsal or virtual sound check training or something like that. And not Sundays. Cause it's, cause yeah, that's a whole nother story. I explained that. Really too. Though, man. Same with my wife. Yeah, that's, those are the main things as of late that I've been, the Lord's been showing me, I need to, you know, get back in the game, be more consistent, even, even breathing, like I started, I got off of it, man, just because I have a tendency to, uh, like growing up in Baltimore, Baltimore slang, never, never slurred everything, you know what I mean, and so we never open our mouths all the way or everything was always tense, always on guard. So to relax my body and actually have it in a place where I can sing properly, like a whole thing. So I started doing breathing exercises again in the morning, doing some jaw exercises, whole nine. That's awesome. Yeah, getting in with the Lord. And so body consistent with serving the Lord, just trying to, trying to do the basic things, like you were saying, just to, um, practice, so yeah, man. Yeah, but this is a beast, beast, man. It's different in this season. It's hard, just the discipline is such a different, it's hard to explain. Like, I'm starting over, 
learning how to be disciplined at this age in my life. I mean, 16 years into marriage, I'd be like, oh, okay, I feel like I don't know anymore, I guess. Right. <laughs> so, I get that. I, I love that challenge, though, because I think it strengthens the thing. Whatever it is, marriage, talent, work, yeah. whatever it is, if you, if you kind of, like, embrace change to a certain extent, and, like, it just creates growth. It, it creates other things too. It can create some messiness in, in periods of growth, but it also it creates growth. You know, as long as you're committed to the growth, um, and if you do it in a way like sometimes I can't tell Colette that I'm trying to grow. I gotta kind of be like do it and just apologize, and then be like, hey, in that whole season there, I was I'm different now, right? And I have to, I need affirmation sometimes. I'm like, am I? Have you noticed the past six months that I did this, this, this? You know, and yeah, I love all the things that she 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 notices that I've done, like that is really really bold, like that she says inspired. Like when I started walking, you know, she was really like, you know, I need to start walking too, and I need to do this, and then she'll join me, and then she'll push me even in those. And it's like I ain't, I'm not too proud to let my wife not push me. And there was one time where I was like. Well, not one time. More times, I'm like, you need to slow down because you're making me walk faster than I'm used to walking. Right, right. But then there was one time that I didn't even notice it. We were like almost four full miles in at the end of it all, going up a hill. And she's like, you know, this whole time you stood right beside me. And then my watch binged and told me that I had walked a minute and a half faster. So I normally do like 18 minute miles. And it was like 16 and a half. And I was like, wow. And I wasn't trying to impress her or nothing, but her... We had time for it where over like around Christmas where she could help me push. And I was like, man, you walking consistently with you. It didn't take months. It took like three, four days back to back. And on the fifth day, yeah, yeah. I'm like keeping up with you. That's yeah. amazing. Day two and three, I was like, I don't want to walk with you no more because you walk too fast. Right, right, right. I ain't right. never going to say that, but right. it's what it felt like, Thanks. you know, because I really do appreciate the time out there with them. That's good. That's a great illustration for marriage. That you said a lot. But anyway, yes, tangents can happen. Um, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. So we are at the end of our time. And I want to ask a favor of you. I believe in who you are as a leader. Um, and so I'm going to ask something. And hopefully it doesn't put a lot of pressure on you. Um, but can you pray for leaders and people that happen to stop by and watch this? Um, and things that have helped you, whatever God lays on your heart to play, pray for this community that's developing in central Pennsylvania. Can you do that? And it doesn't have to be focused on the community, but just for people and leaders and leadership and growth and whatever God lays on your heart, just pray us out. Yeah. Sure. I would give thanks for um, uh, meeting us where we are, but um, never leaving us the same. Thank you for what you're doing in this county. Thank you for the work that um, oftentimes we don't see. Um, that you're consistently moving, consistently um, um, just in charge of it all. Help us as leaders to um, just stop thinking that we need to be in control or um, Things won't work out, or people won't meet Jesus, or won't be touched by a song, won't be led well if we don't do all the things, God. Uh, we thank you, Jesus, for um, just the spirit that is in, within us, uh, that leads and guides, God. Thank you for what you're doing. Um, within those who do function in the capacity of worship leading, uh, what a gift it is just to um, just to to be in relationship with you, Jesus, to um, to, to sing truths um, that can set people free, um, to be to to be used on a platform that many people see, um, and somehow you you settle us enough that our Pride doesn't, um, you know, take us crazy off track. Um, so thank you, God, for what you're doing in our hearts. Pray for those that do um, 
struggle. I'm sure everyone in some capacity as a leader with believing um, lies of adequacy or um, worthiness or um, comparison to others um, uh, or just seeing maybe the lie that they don't meet up to being someone that can be used uh, by you, Jesus. Thank you that you are strong in our in our weaknesses and that those weaknesses actually help people to see Jesus in us. Um, but also you won't leave us there. So uh, thank you for the the growth, sanctification process of, that all of us are on as believers and what you're doing in the midst of maybe those embarrassing moments on stage, maybe those um like we were talking about where we fumble on words or um, sang in the wrong key, whatever it is, but that you're able to be seen in the imperfections uh, because somehow you, you work in other people's lives through us, um, through people that are just wretched, just unworthy without you, God. So thank, thank you for using brokenness. Uh, Thank you for using us as your vessels. So, pray that your name would be uh, made great um, on every stage in this uh, in this area, God. That uh, people gather to worship your name, um, Holy Spirit. Empower, um, strengthen, give give these leaders boldness. Um, God, the spiritual warfare is real. Um, God, thank you for fighting on our behalf for going before us um, and pursuing your people with your goodness and your mercy. So God, help us to see that this is all about uh, the person and work of Jesus and pray that others would see our good works, see our good deeds, that that would bring glory to your precious name. Uh, so we love you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dude, thank you. This yes, was sir. This was good. We yeah, give my heart. Yes, sir. Grateful for yeah. you believing enough in me to allow me to have some of your time and to share honor, this conversation with people. Man, be the D tone. D tone. I am D tone. I'm signing off at Instagram.